iPhone 13 Pro Max 2.5 years later. So in this episode, we're going to take a look at the 13 Pro Max after being on the market for right around 2.5 years. Now I've had this phone since launch, so everything you hear in this video is from an actual owner of this phone. In this episode, we are going to be looking at the iOS version 17.4.1. So we're definitely talking about the latest and greatest software. Now, in terms of the price point, the iPhone 13 Pro Max can now be found for prices under $600, depending on the conditions, but they're right around that $600 mark right now. Now, I don't always recommend using eBay, but I just look at this to kind of get a gauge the market, see what the prices are going for. Some people are willing to unload these phones for under $600. Granted, some of them are going to be in excellent refurb condition, um, but they might have replacement batteries. They may not be careful when you are shopping for one of these secondhand, but these phones held their value, value pretty well. However, we need to find out, is it worth it now that we're on 17.41? We're also well over 50% less than the original base price. Now from the design perspective, we are looking at stainless steel edges here. Definitely very premium. Camera bump definitely sticks off the body there. We do have a SIM card tray in this phone, which is a definite benefit if you don't want to switch to eSIM yet. We do have ourselves the power buttons right or volume rockers right there, silent switch. And overall, this phone just still feels very premium, even by comparison to the brand new iPhone 15 Pro Max. So overall, I got to say its weight, its durability, its polish still feels like a really nice smartphone. So I'm definitely not disappointed with the iPhone 13 Pro Max. If I was to say it has any weaknesses, it's that it's quite a heavy phone. It's definitely chunky, and without a case, it's definitely usable, but when you start putting some heavier, thicker, like, body glove or some, like, you know, stronger cases on here, this thing can get quite a brick in your pocket. So I definitely prefer the lighter titanium builds now, but if you're looking for an excellent deal, this still feels so much more premium than some other phones you can get at this price point right now. So definitely I like the 13 Pro Max in that regard. That is still a really nice premium feel at a discounted price tag. It's really cool. One thing that's also looking a little bit dated now is the lightning port, but at least you still have them precisionly drilled holes here. The attention to detail with the design, it's still very beautiful. Um, even if you have some older tech. Now, when I say older tech, I'm talking from the perspective of a 15 user. If you haven't upgraded to 15, you probably still have tons of lightning ports laying around. Um, you can see 5G antenna right there. But overall, you know, this was maybe peak iPhone here in terms of the feel, its overall qualities, design, everything. We haven't really went to the next level yet, I feel like. And I feel like the AI this year, along with the Tetra Prism camera, in the improvement to maybe reduction even more in bezels. I do think the 16 Pro Max is going to be, or even if they call it the 16 Ultra, is going to be leaps and bounds ahead of this one. Um, but the 14 Pro Max, 15 Pro Max, just feel like some refinements over this product. One thing that really stands out about the iPhone 13 Pro Max is that it does have a ProMotion display. So even though it's an older product, it still really feels quite nice to use day to day. It gets plenty bright, although it's not going to get as bright as the newer phones. It, what, it was a really good decision for Apple to go ahead and put the promotion on here. It really has allowed this phone to remain smooth and feel really up to date even all of these years later. Well, I say all these years, like it's forever, 2.5 years later. Um, now, if you're using this and you're like, should I keep this thing? Should I keep going? Um, from a display perspective, absolutely. It's basically the same thing as the 15 Pro Max. However, up here with the notch, that's definitely becoming more noticeable and noticeable as phones continue to reduce their bezels and continue to get sleeker. This becomes more noticeable when you compare. When you're not comparing and you're not looking at it um, and compared to a phone in the store or online and you're not like trying to make yourself feel bad that you have a notch, you won't care. So the, the moral of the story is we don't really care unless we're comparing. So overall, not bad. But this also has a really nice saturation without being overly saturated. It also has really sharp text. So if you're reading articles and stuff like in an application like 9to5Mac, and this is not sponsored by them, but I just wanted to mention, you know, sharper text. When you're reading, you know, news articles and stuff like that, 
it has plenty of sharpness within this display panel. So that hasn't really changed incredibly much either. You know, Apple doesn't really change their actual display qualities too much over the years um, because they kind of just pick a really good one and stick with it for a while. And I honestly don't feel like using this is very different from using a 14 or 15 Pro Max's panel besides the fact that they slightly reduced the bezels and changed the notch. Now from the software perspective, I think it's also safe to say that, you know, you're basically using the same experience that you're going to use on a newer iPhone, even down to like the widgets and everything. It's also pretty much the same. So when you are using, you know, widgets and stuff like that, it all kind of feels like very modern. It still feels up to date. When you do go into your settings menu, though, and you scroll down to camera and stuff like that, you will notice you don't have all the same features that you'll find in like a 15 Pro Max and stuff like that. However, the overall just kind of feel of this phone um, is not very different. It really isn't. It just kind of feels like I'm using another iPhone. So you're good here. In terms of the software updates though, how many years does it have left for a 2.5? I would say you probably have another 2.5 before you should even be worried or considering um, is this going to get updated anymore? So if you bought this now, you got almost three years left to still use it. So $500 for an iPhone 13 Pro Max with still about three years remaining on usage. Now in terms of performance, man, does this thing still fly? I was actually testing this yesterday just to kind of see how it performs. And man, it still flies like a brand new iPhone. It really is nice. However, I will tell you one area I do notice it not being like a brand new iPhone is that when you are using this for a little while or you're like playing a game or you're opening a lot of things this one tends to get a little bit warmer in my use i also noticed under heavier use for some reason my battery was draining much faster um obviously under heavier use it would but i'm saying it was draining like weirdly quickly so i don't know if that's uh, if you're having issues with the latest updates let me know with the battery life but the battery life is still really good it's just under this heavier use. I don't know if it was indexing or something. It was, when I first installed it, it was definitely draining. But the performance is crazy good on here still. Like, it really is. Like, look at this. And at the same time, though, you have the A15 Bionic. I'm not sure how many AI features this is going to get with the iOS 18. But considering that Samsung just launched, you know, the AI on their older phones, I'm sure Apple's going to try their best to get their AI even on some of these older phones because they know they have a ton of customers still on these devices. Um, but overall performance, really still good. And one of the saving graces of the 13 Pro Max, even versus the base 13, which is also a very popular phone, is the 6 gigs of RAM. It really saved this phone. And when I say saved this phone, I mean saved it from getting slower faster than like a base 13, which is actually slower than this right now. Um, one thing I want to talk about now is the cameras on here. You know, I feel like I'm beating this like a broken record player. I've been making multiple videos on this phone ever since I purchased it over the years. Um, but these still remain some of my favorite cameras. Reason why is that the iPhone 13 Pro Max has cameras that you don't really need to think about. They just kind of always work. They are like the best regular consumer cameras out there. Let me go ahead and throw in something so we can go ahead and take a photo that was my iphone 15 pro max by the way and let's go ahead and kind of see so i just zoom in i take a photo and bang so it's just a like a perfect photo i also can back it out why you can see my feet and tripod right there and bang we have a nice photo standard wide very good now you're not going to go over the top with any extras except for the cinematic mode you have 4k 60 but the video is super smooth as well and then if we flip it over to the front, this is also very good. And if you didn't know, I'm shooting this video on the Galaxy S24 Ultra with no microphones attached. This is pure S24 Ultra. So let me know your thoughts on that. Thumbs up if you enjoy um, the quality of that. But just a phenomenal camera here still all across the board on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Seriously still recommended 2.5 years later. All right, so let's take a look at the battery life now. So the battery life on here is also pretty strong. Provided you turn on low power mode, you can get even longer battery, but then you take away the promotion. The battery life on the iPhone 13 Pro Max has always been a strong suit for it, and it remains that way, provided you do have a good health. That's why I say be careful when you're buying these phones not to buy them with a bad capacity. Make sure the seller shows you this, this is higher. Mine's still at 100% because I switch phones more frequently than the average user. 
Um, but if you do uh, look for one of these, make sure they have at least like 95 or higher on that battery health. So you have a lot of life remaining. The phone call quality was actually very good on this phone as well. This was post Intel modem, so it started getting really good here. This is also still a really good use option because that's 5G performance, so that's good. Although not the fastest Wi-Fi and Bluetooth standards on this product, it also um, is not going to let you down because the standards that were on this were still good enough. So the 13 Pro Max, very fast still overall. Now, also, this had some nice colors. We have this graphite gray color, which I really liked. They had the gold color option, silver and uh, Sierra Blue as well, so definitely quite a few color options, and the Alpine Green, which was a spring color option, which was probably my favorite. I covered it on the channel, but I didn't end up keeping it because I didn't feel the need to keep two 13 Pro Maxes, but if you want to see my Alpine Green unboxing of this, I'll leave it linked down below in the comments, in the description of this video, so go ahead and check that out. Um, but after one, you know, time around, two times around actually buying this phone with the Alpine and this one, um, is it worth it at $500 off 50, basically 50% 50 off its original price on the 13 Pro Max? And the answer is yes, definitely is. I actually, if I was in the market looking for a budget phone, like a $500 smartphone, there are a lot of great options at that price. I'd still consider the 13 Pro Max just because a lot of $500 phone options are either smaller screens, weaker processors, or camera. You're sacrificing something. But you don't really sacrifice anything here as this is still being updated, still has premium cameras, premium build, premium battery. It's a great secondhand option and definitely better than even some current budget offerings. Although those budget offerings will give you some neater, newer, modern features, there's still sacrifices to be made to get it to that price point. Whereas this one originally launched at a flagship tier price. So you're getting a really good steal of the deal here. Let me know your thoughts on it. Are you picking one up this year? Are you planning on trading? Are you planning on keeping your really nice iPhone 13 Pro Max. Let me know down below in the comment section of this video. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.